guys, welcome back to another edition of Raw Intuition Inside Scoop. Tonight we have another very inspirational guest joining us, Chris Kendall, who is a registered holistic nutritionist, raw food lifestyle coach, and raw food chef. And I have personally been following Chris ever since I got into this lifestyle over seven years ago. Uh, and I know Chris has been in this lifestyle uh, over 15 years, I believe. So I have just been trying to, you know, collect as much beneficial information that he's been sharing over the years to apply to my life and, you know, in hopes of being as successful as Chris has been for as long as he has been. So, you know, that's the goal. And that's why I wanted him to come onto the channel and share some of his, you know, wisdom and knowledge that he has gained over the, you know, many years of eating this way and living this way so that you guys can, you know, apply some of that to your life. So, Chris, thank you so much for joining the channel. It's great to have you. Absolute honor and blessing, man. Thank you so much for inviting me on. And, and, you know, thanks for sharing that as well. I really appreciate that feedback. And I love doing what I do. I love sh uh, sharing this information. I just feel blessed to connect and build a grow with everyone here. Yeah. Yeah, man. Love watching your videos and everything. So, we'll get, to, the, we'll get to that in a little bit here. But uh, first off, I don't know that I've actually heard the story of how you got into raw food. So, can you yeah. kind of give us an idea of kind of how your lifestyle was previous to <laughs> your lifestyle and what kind of got you into that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's funny. I, I did a story in Byron's magazine once called Ragged to Rossum because that's kind of how I was a little bit. Yeah, and um, I'll do it fairly brief. But, you know, my, my story started as you know a young skateboarder. I've been skateboarding since I was five years old and I always wanted to do that basically all the time. And then when I got to be a mid teen, that's what I wanted to do for a living. So I was, I was trying to be a professional skateboarder. Wow. Uh, so I graduated school early. I was always good at academics and finished it early and moved out. And as soon as I moved out on my own, my diet kind of went south, you know, like from my perspective now, of course, my diet growing up wasn't perfect, but my parents did well. They gave us whole foods and a general kind of healthy, uh, standard American diet healthier. But when I moved out on my own, it was like, fast food, you know, uh, cigarettes, beer, uh, marijuana, like all that stuff nonstop all the time. Like it'd be like an extra large bacon, double cheeseburger pizza for lunch and dinner. And then a 40 to wash it down with a pack of cigarettes and a couple bong rips. And, uh, you know, the next morning wake up and maybe have a beer to start or maybe not depending on the day and fast food again. And progressively I did, you know, sometimes utilize my cooking skills because I did like to cook and make my own food, but usually then that'd be like, you know, hash browns and bacon and pierogies and all that stuff. You guys don't know pierogies are, you're missing out if you eat those kinds of things. You yeah, know, I'm not familiar. No, they're like potato dumplings. You know, I actually have a raw recipe for that, but uh, cool. I digress. Anyhow, uh, by the time I was like 18, so this would have been like 98, uh, I was feeling pretty crappy. And by the time I was 99, I was like depressed and had joint pain and brain fog and I wasn't a happy camper. I essentially didn't want to live anymore. I wasn't skateboarding well. I wasn't recovering well. My mind frame was way far away from gratitude, which it used to be. I was just stoked and happy to be alive and running around and skateboarding, mm -hmm. but I couldn't do that how I wanted to. And I was feeling crappy. So what happened next was uh, nothing short of amazing that it happened at Walmart. I was there and found a Robert Yee or Rodney Yee intermediate power yoga VHS tape, right? Wow. And it was in the bulk bin, I think two or three bucks. And I took it home and started using that all the time. It kind of broadened my horizons towards uh, karma, towards the yogic philosophies. I started reading more about that. Uh, previous to that, I'd read some stuff on spirituality and on uh, fantasy and other fun topics. But this really sparked my interest into yogic philosophy and learning about karma and the implications of eating meat really kind of struck a chord, right? Yeah. So I started understanding like, man, like food actually makes an impact. Before that, I, like I said, I thought Taco Bell was like mother nature's best fuel. You know, I thought it was great, you know, like eat eight bucks of Taco Bell and just go, you know? Yeah. And uh, so I went home about, I think it was about five or six months later after starting up with yoga and really getting into that. And I went to a used bookstore looking for something on nutrition and one book jumped out and it was called, uh, Fit for Life by Harvey and Marilyn Diamond. And if you're not familiar with that, or if you know someone who could use a little bit of a revamp, I highly recommend the first book, Fit for Life. They have a couple that went off that, but 
It basically is a nice introduction into plant-based living, into high carbohydrate, into food combining, um, into eating more fruit and fruit-based meals. Um, and I, I took that on wholeheartedly. I'm kind of A-type, you know, sometimes all or nothing, which I've learned to kind of uh, find my middle ground with these days. Yeah. But back then I took that on 100% to the degree where food combining became like a rule and I had to do it all the time. And uh, I started eating fruit for breakfast on an empty stomach to improve my digestion. And, you know, now that's been 18, 18 and a half, 19 years since that, you know, there's 99 ish. Um, and I think I've probably had about five cooked breakfasts since then. Like that's how kind of a type I am. Right. Yeah. And uh, interestingly too, I've only had two sick days since then in the last 18 years. Nice. Um, over a four and a half, four year period, I went from, fast food and everything to high raw vegan. And there was the transition between where I cut out a lot of things and added in more things. I was pretty gradual and easy on myself during that period of time. I didn't make super hard, fast rules. Besides, I really did food combining and the fruit for breakfast. Those are the big, big things. Um, Progressively, it basically got till fruit till dinner. And then it was uh, basically raw, raw till four vegan for about six months. At that time, I joined a school called uh, the Canadian School of Natural Nutrition to get my designation registered holistic nutritionist. Mm-hmm. And uh, during that schooling, I met Dr. Doug Graham at a vegan health festival. If, cool. if anyone doesn't know Dr. Doug Graham, he's uh, the creator of the 80-10-10 diet. That's 80-10-10 diet. Um, and, you know, like a, I think now 35 or 37-year raw foodist and one of my biggest mentors. And uh, I learned a lot from him that first day. And the next day, I went 100% raw. And truthfully, although there's been some bumps along the road, I've never looked back, you know, and that's now over 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, The first five years, I really just set on applying the lifestyle, learning as much as I could from others who've been down the road further than I have. And then from there, you know, I couldn't deny it any longer. About uh, 10 years ago, I started the raw advantage and that's all I do full time now. Very cool. Is uh, Doug Graham, he's, he's not from Canada, is he? No, you know, Doug's actually from Florida, but his wife's from the UK. So he has a property, I believe in both, but he lives basically full time with his wife and uh, their child out in uh, around the England area. And it's pretty awesome too, because like I've grown to know he's like family now. He's like a bigger brother, kind of uh, uncle, dad kind of figure. And his family is really close. And his daughter, you know, since conception, raw vegan, you know, it's really cool. (laughs) Wow. Nice. Cool. So, so since making this change, uh, what sort of changes have you seen in your life, uh, physically, mentally, spiritually, and all that stuff? Well, you know, it's put me much more in touch with myself. I'll say that, you know, it's like, I I often consider the raw food lifestyle, a vortex of positive change, something that really begets an opening in every single area. And whether it is an opening that you follow through with, or whether it's an opening that you get freaked out about and shoved back down, that's a whole different story. But, you know, for me, it's brought, uh, you know, way, way faster recovery. Uh, it's got more clarity, uh, you know, more positivity. It's allowed me to connect with myself and in nature way more. And spirituality, I think, is an interesting one. Like, I, I don't find that raw foodists are more spiritual, but it puts you more in touch with your spirituality, right? So um, throughout different periods, because this has been 15 years now, right, I've had periods where that's been the sole focus, where I was like, you know, no fap for a year and, and like kind of monkish and not really interested in that outward experience and, uh, and then flip to the other side. Right. And it's been an interesting, an interesting growth journey. And sometimes it's been faster and like really, really exuberant. And other times it's been a little slower and denied it a little bit and tried to just be really grounded in worldly activities. Right. But, uh, there isn't any aspect of living that I can't say it has touched. And if it hasn't uh, immediately made it stronger, what it's done is made the vulnerabilities more in the forefront so that I can look at them and see, okay, well, what can I do here? Right. So it's just been a huge growth process and opening. Yeah. Yeah. I can definitely relate to that. A lot of parallels there. Um, so has the, the way that you eat and live in the beginning of this lifestyle, um, has it changed at all or has it pretty much stayed the same throughout the whole 15 plus years? Well, you know, I mean, there are some things that have stayed almost identical and there are some things that have changed a little bit, right? So the things that have stayed pretty much identical is that I'm a fruit-based raw foodist, you know, fruits and young tender greens basically are the, 
the major part or the staple of my lifestyle, you know, and um, in the very beginning, uh, I didn't really understand caloric density, which is simply just, you know, picking some foods that are a little bit higher in calorie per volume to get, make it easier to get enough calories. Mm -hmm. So when I first started, I was eating like a lot of strawberries and watermelons and melons and peaches and nectarines. I was, I was out in BC and you know, the corner store had really ripe fruit for like 50, 60% off all the time. So I wouldn't even have food at home. I'd just go get fresh stuff and eat meal per meal. I felt like I was on rocket fuel. I felt amazing, but I was suddenly under eating and uh, I got really low, you know, like body weight. Like right now I'm at about 180 and I got down to, uh, I think like 155 or 157. So I got pretty light. Yeah. Um, and you know, the first five years of raw food, four or five years, I was really, really simple hygienic, you know, like basically just fruit and greens. I didn't eat any onions, any garlic, any hot peppers, any spices. Wow. Um, I kept it really low fat uh, and that worked really well. Uh, but at one point I wanted to kind of branch out. I wrote a book called 101 Frickin' Raw Some Recipes, which is simple hygienic stuff. Yeah. And I thought, you know, there's a simple hygienic stuff that is really like to me, the staple of the diet. But then when I looked out to raw restaurants that at that time were just becoming more popular and there was in the mainstream media, the raw food diet at that time that was more popular too, was kind of a more raw gourmet kind of approach, which is really high fat and lots of salt and a whole bunch of spices and stuff like that. And I felt like, you know what, there needs to be a middle ground. Like I really want to be someone who bridges the gap to connect both people and find each kind of medium that works best for the individual so I started experimenting with adding stuff like some spices and some hot peppers and green onions and stuff like that. And it's really funny because I remember when I first went to the grocery store to buy a jalapeno, I'm not kidding you. I was like looking over my shoulder in my head, thinking that someone was going to see me and catch me and think that like, you're bad, you know, you shouldn't do that. Cause yeah. you know, for five years, I was kind of in a hygienic mental state where it was like, that's bad and that's, you know, toxic and you shouldn't do it. Um, slowly things shifted and uh, I recognized that, Hey, it's just choice and experience. And this is something I do want to experience and I want to share and, you know, be a bit of a wider funnel to bring more people in. Cause you know, not as many people are just going to be like, Hey, come join me. We eat bananas and lettuce all day. Right. But if you're like I can make some pasta and I can make some, you know, pizzas. Hey, come check this out. It's pretty fun. You know, then, yeah. then they do, you know? So yep. um, that was the big shift after five years, getting into a little bit more low fat raw gourmet and experimenting with cuisine um, the last year or so, or a little less, maybe I've been focusing a little bit more on high omega three, uh, seeds and nuts. And that's always been kind of conscious, but even more so now, you know, like in the past, uh, also I've experimented a little bit more with some seaweeds, like really good quality seaweeds. Okay. Um, and on an occasion, I also have some frozen vegetables, which are technically blanched. Mm -hmm. So for example, I make a big raw curry and I'll have like freshly frozen and thawed cauliflower and some partially dehydrated mushrooms. And then I'll put like frozen peas in there just because I love the heck out of them yeah. and then make a nice thick coconut curry sauce. And it's like, <laughs> it's, so, it's so good. And I feel amazing. So yeah. what dictates my diet right now is like, you know, it's not raw as law. It's just what feels the best and raw foods just feel the best. So I eat 99.9% .9 raw, right? hundred percent of the time basically. Yeah. Yeah. So being a raw food chef, uh, you know, you're making, you know, tons of recipes. Do you have a favorite recipe? You know, actually that one I just mentioned, um, the coconut curry, which I also kind of switch it up and I'll be coming out with a new video cause I don't have that video out. And part of it was because, you know, it's my favorite one. I, I, and now I'm kind of turning like, you know, I really, I probably would be good to put out my favorite one. Right. Yeah. Um, but I call it cocoa butter veggies and it's essentially just like a kind of a mix between aloo gobi and butter chicken. Okay. You know, East Indian cuisine used to be my absolute favorite East Indian and Thai mm -hmm. and, uh, pizza. But, uh, so yeah, my favorite recipe typically is a curry and okay. I could eat that. I could eat that four days a week. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So, uh, you know, ha having those, you know, the love for those foods, did you have cravings, um, you know, did you have any, any struggles as you were transitioning into the, into the raw lifestyle? You know, it's kind of funny because the first five years, like I said, it was either like so full on that I couldn't imagine doing anything else. 
yeah. or all of a sudden falling down a pit and being like, oh, fuck everything. I don't care. You know, like, so, you know, when I first started, like I basically, I went 30 days. I'm like, I'm just going to do 30 days. Mm-hmm. And in the middle of that day, 15, I had a handful of granola and immediately was like, that was silly. Why? I didn't, didn't even enjoy that. And then I, you know, went the rest of 15. And then I remember I was like, okay, well I'm done. I can do whatever I want. So I had three days, right? It basically ate, uh, you know, all you can eat buffet, East Indian, uh, some Thai, some Ethiopian, all vegan, but still all cooked in pretty high processed oily stuff. Yeah. And I also had a uh, all you can eat pizza and Subway. And then I felt so crap. I was like, screw this. I went back to it. And for eight months, it was like solid. Like it was so solid that when people asked me, I'm like, this is, this is it. Like I'd rather fast for like three months than have a bite of cooked food. Like I, that's truly how I felt in that moment. Right. Yeah. Um, and I didn't really have cravings. I just felt so damn good. And I was so focused. Uh, part of that being that in that moment, I really equated being raw with success. It was like, it had so much purpose behind it. It had so much passion behind it. I felt like if I could just get this diet stuff perfect, that everything else in life would be easy. Right. Which yeah. it isn't true, but I believed that at that moment. And because of that, I had so much like, uh, for it that I, nothing else could phase me at all, you know, but uh, eventually something did. And I, I fell down a rabbit hole and came back up three days later and was like even stronger for it. So, cool. and that rabbit hole was a fast food restaurant. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> those was... are big rabbit holes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so other than the food, what, uh, what other practices, lifestyle based, you know, practices do you incorporate that, um, you know, help you, either stick to the, to the diet if, if, you know, if you need that, but like in general for other people, what are some other lifestyle factors that, um, you know, you have found helpful in just, uh, bringing in more well being to your life? Well, you know, I mean, I always like to present that every single lifestyle factor is just as important as the other, you know, the raw food diet is hugely, hugely beneficial. And it, like I said, it opens up people like crazy. And part of that is because we're so far off base with food that it just makes that much difference. But once you've got it, the other stuff is just as important. So whether that's talking about good quality sleep or one that I would definitely like to mention is exercise, you know, and exercise doesn't need to be at the gym. I, I just got back from the gym and I like pushing weight, but if you don't enjoy pushing weight, find something you love doing because that way you're more likely to be doing it until someone says, Hey, stop, come on, you got to eat as opposed to like just trying to half ass it. Right. So Um, the importance of exercise, I think can't be understated, you know, especially the raw food lifestyle, just because the more you exercise one, the more demand you create for refueling your cells and the more sensitive your insulin function gets. So you can actually uptake sugars way more efficiently. Um, you can streamline that entire digestive process as it strengthens your digestion. And at the same time, the more energy you expend, the more you're pumping your body, the more total calories you require which is going to be more likely to bring you to the optimal level of nutrition because you know, someone could be on the perfect diet, but if they're not active at all, they're not getting enough total calories and they're not getting enough total nutrition to thrive. Whereas if you're exercising at a reasonable pace, there is the opposite end where if you're just a, you know, ultra marathonist and you do it all the time, you can deplete yourself, but finding that medium where you're enjoying the activity you do, and you want to continue doing it, but you find that you need to take breaks time, time and time again to heal. And that just brings you to a way better balance with uh, your actual nutrient needs on every level. Mm-hmm. Right. Quality yeah. water too, man. Quality water. Sorry to interrupt, but like oh, yeah. every single lifestyle factor again is important. So you mean, you know, reducing chemical exposure, like finding emotional poise, uh, finding purpose, you know, having connection with loved ones in nature, you know, all of these things are important. It's just one by one looking at those different aspects and avenues that you can embed your life and strengthen your own connection to, you know, to your health pursuit. Right. Yeah. Well said. Um, so if, if people were out there, you know, trying to get into the raw food lifestyle and they're looking at Chris Kendall, it's been mm-hmm. doing this for, for a long time. Uh, what, what advice would you give them if they're struggling to stick with, you know, just getting into the lifestyle? Do, you know, some people will just want to be kind of like you said, just a hundred percent, you know, like you yeah. can be and, and they get too hard on themselves, you know, 
and then they get frustrated and they can't stick with it, fall away. Um, yeah. You know, have you, I'm sure you've dealt with people like this, you know, help people, you know, with these issues. Uh, what, what uh, tips would you give to people that are struggling with different aspects of the lifestyle? That's a great question. And, you know, it, it all really comes down to the individual, you know, because, sure. you know, I've consulted hundreds of people now and, you know, each person is vastly different. Some people it's education. And that's one of the biggest ones. Absolutely. Is coming to the point of competency that you understand that this is not only a great way to live, but potentially the, the best way in terms of creating health and ecology and saving the animals and every single thing. Right. So, um, getting that education so you do understand and you feel confident because even if you're eating a great diet and you don't feel confident, if you're walking down the street and some doctor goes, oh, but you, know, you need to eat meat, blah, 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 you know, that can shake you. And if you're shook, you know, you're not going to be thriving. You're not going to look the part, right? You know, so education is huge. Um, you know, and with that, I mean, whether it's, uh, you know, listening to some really good YouTubers and then listening to multiple and listening to doctors and finding the commonalities, you know, because sometimes we can find some really far off left field stuff. We'll check that and see if there's a lot of other people that have been doing it for a while who are also saying the same things, right? Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, you know, sometimes consultation. I mean, that's why I do consultations because, you know, I've had people who I've talked with that literally said, if I would have talked to you 10 years ago, I would have saved thousands of dollars and been in a way better state of health, you know, because, yeah. you know, a lot of people get sold on a lot of things, right? Yeah. Um, a, lot out there. <laughs> a lot out there. And the other thing, you know, I mean, and this is one of the biggest ones. A lot of times when I talk to people, it isn't so much about food because when you really get it, when you really understand that if you're talking about your, your caloric needs and your nutrient needs, you know, you can't do much better than fruits and veg and you really, it requires a mindset shift to complete abundance where it's like every meal you're eating, eat until you're like, you're like, whoo, like I'm done. Like, it's not a scarcity diet. You know, it's one of those ones where you can just eat your face off. I eat my face off every meal. Me too. But once, you, once you've gotten that, right, because that's, that's one of the signs of longevity is someone who understands that it is a diet of abundance and you don't have to be afraid of overeating a mango, you know. Yeah. Um, once you get that, then it's the emotional aspects, you know, and that's one of the biggest things that I see with people because when you're detoxifying at a high, much higher rate, you know, because you're eating such a high vibrancy diet, and most people are under eating calories, well, you're going to be burning through adipose tissue. You're going to be burning through old tissues, old stored memories, old stored uh, toxins in the cells that come up and make you want to pull your hairs out. So, you know, understanding that, knowing that there's going to be some bumps along the road and having some new coping mechanisms in place that you can flex with, right? Because the old coping mechanism might be a uh, you know, drinking or going to the pizzeria or whatever it may be, you know, triple decker, ice cream, cake, bonanza, whatever you want to say, right? But yeah. um, if that's your old coping mechanism, you got to recognize it and start to notice the triggers and find a new avenue, a new way to cope. Um, and then above all, and this is the biggest one, I think, is to be easy on yourself, you know, recognize that, uh, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day, right? It, it takes time. It's a complete switch. Like, not just like you, you think it's easy because it's just, oh, it's just food. I put it in my mouth, but yeah. it goes into the social sphere. It goes into the emotional sphere. It goes into, uh, you know, just mainstream media. It goes into so many aspects. It goes into your own psyche. Um, it goes into familial situations. And, you know, I think it's really just important to be really easy on yourself and recognize it's what you do the most amount of time that has the biggest effect. And your mindset about things has as big of an impact as the other stuff does too. So, you know, be easy on yourself. Most people, it takes five to seven years to get the hang of this lifestyle to the point where it's like second nature. And you're not thinking about it or worrying about it or stressed about it. It's just, this is food and I eat it when I'm hungry until I'm full, you know, and there's always more to learn. So I, I do all, I do always recommend uh, education and learning more. I'm actually right now I'm in a course called uh, mastering raw food nutrition with Dr. Rick and Karen Dina, nice. which uh, is like a college level uh, raw food nutrition course and between them they have like 60 years experience and mm -hmm. over a decade of clinical experience doing blood work specifically on vegans and raw vegans so it's it's really awesome i can't help but recommend that as well so if someone wants to really get an in-depth knowledge check them out and uh tell them i sent you yeah yeah love dr rick and karen 
They're great. They're awesome, man. They're so awesome. I feel so blessed, you know, that like, to me, I feel like I kind of got into this just at an amazing time. And I, I am and have been so passionate about it for so long and, a, uh, you know, a lifelong learner trying to learn. And because of that, you know, getting into like Woodstock the very first year and, and all these other festivals have now been to like, I think like near 30 festivals. And I've gotten to meet all the long-termers and find those commonalities and find all the things and, you know, try and learn from everyone because everyone has so much to, to give, right? So yeah. I just feel so blessed to be in the position I am and then to be able to connect and share with everyone out here. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So yeah, um, are you, you got any retreats or uh, fests coming up in the future here in the near yeah. future? Yeah, I got a couple of really fun ones. Yeah. Um, yeah. Next month, I'll be going to the UK Fruit Fest um, out kind of a couple hours from London. And that's going to be super fun. I actually have a discount discount code and I'll just say it once because it's for all the festivals. Oh, cool. My discount code is banana, just <laughs> banana. I'm the banana commander. I got the banana mustache going on. Right. right. Uh, so that's, that's the end of July. And then early uh, August is the Canada fruit festival. Uh, this will be their second year. And again, code banana. That's going to be awesome. That's just a three day one. The UK one is a week. And then, kind of mid late August is the Woodstock fruit festival, the biggest one longest running festival out there. Uh, and that one is, yeah, I think August uh, 18th until 25th or 6th. And that's in New York state. It's really awesome too. And bananas, the code um, for retreats. I try and do one or two every single year. I usually do them in Costa Rica or Mexico. My next one isn't until February, March on the cusp uh, 2020. So and no discount code for that. But there will be an early bird sign up. So I'll be announcing that soon. So if you follow me, the Rod Vantage, I'll be talking about early bird prices soon. Cool. Um, so um, for people that aren't aware of, uh, you know, what uh, a retreat like this is about, uh, can you kind of just explain a little bit about like what they can expect and what some of the benefits that you've experienced from going to these? Absolutely. You know, it's, it's a whole immersion. That's the thing. Like, you know, we read a book, we understand some stuff, we apply it, but a lot of the stuff is really sunk in through being with people that have been doing it long term, who have a sense of ease, of confidence, and a greater understanding, whether that's nutritionally or whether that's just uh, physically and um, uh, practically, right? Sure. So, you know, when you go into these events, I mean, that's one of the beautiful things about Woodstock. You're around like 500 people or any festival, you're around like hundreds of people. Right. They get it, right? You're, you're not on defense. You're not like sitting there eating bananas, you know, thinking someone's going to come by and be like, what the hell are you doing? You know, you know that's potassium, blah, you know, like there's just a sense of com camaraderie and like good vibes, you know, <laughs> good vibes, right? Um, beyond that, there's just awesome education. Like, you know, these festivals typically have at least four to 10 uh, long-term raw foodists that have been around for a long time that, have uh, you know put a lot of time into making you know this their life's mission and you can learn a lot from being around someone like that even for a couple hours you know it's some things kind of float through by osmosis and other things you need to sit and talk and do other stuff but you know beyond that of course there's the food all of them have delicious foods uh, the best quality organics and uh, you know tropicals and local stuff and recipes I'm blessed to be a chef at uh, some of the festivals like the Woodstock one and beyond that is just, you know, the connection, the friends, you know, the people that you meet that become lifelong friends. Cause you know, we're lucky to have the internet and to have Facebook and to have all these means to connect. But when you go to these festivals and you meet people one-on-one, -on -one, you make friends for life. Right. And beyond that, there's also activities, you know, like, I mean, I teach yoga, um, there's weightlifting stuff, there's dancing stuff, there's nature walks, there's meditation, there's, you know, like on the lake doing lake sports and, just lots of fun stuff. It's just like a, a fruit camp for young adults and uh, kid like spirits, you know, it's awesome. Yeah. Awesome, man. So where, uh, where can people connect with you, find more about you? Well, I'm, you know, I'm the raw advantage, you know, they call me the banana commander, but everything is at the raw advantage. So rawadvantage.com at the raw advantage on Instagram. Uh, I believe I'm Chris Kendall on LinkedIn uh, Rod Vantage on Pinterest, on Twitter. I'm all over the place. YouTube, Rod Vantage on YouTube. I got like 500 and some 600 videos. I don't know. I've been doing basically a video a week for the last decade awesome. and, uh, got lots of stuff out there. 
Cool. And you just revamped your website, right? Yeah. Yeah, indeed. I'm so stoked, man. It is like eight months in the way in the making. This is my fourth rendition of the site and I'm really happy with it. I think it makes it a lot easier for people to find the goods. You know, it's like, that's what it's all about. Cause before this, I was like, man, like I got like 600 posts, but it's hard to find them. Well, now you can actually, you know, search by topic and you can search by date and have different categories made it more kind of Netflixy, you know, just easier to scroll through and put on a whole bunch of different pages and stuff like that for people to learn more information, not only about myself, but about, you know, frequently asked questions and, you know, more about events. So I have an events page and retreat page and I'm, I'm really stoked, man. Yeah, definitely stoked. And may I ask real quick, how long, when do you think this video will be out? Uh, I can actually probably get it out here in the next uh, day or two. Okay. So I will mention then briefly that if you're listening to this and it's pretty fresh up, then uh, I do also have a big sale because of the site launch. So you can get like 25% off all my books. I got like 10 recipe books and some instructional books and uh, t-shirts, all that fun stuff like this one here. Ooh, peace, love, and seasonal fruit. Very nice. You can get 25% off again with the code banana. So wow. yeah, I like banana. I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> it's fitting for the banana commander. <laughs> All right. Well, man, this was great. I loved having you and you shared a lot of great information that people I'm sure are going to love. So, uh, really appreciate you taking time to, you know, come and speak with us and absolute uh, pleasure, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so everybody go check out all of Chris's resources. I'll put everything in a, in the comments box or the description box down below. Um, so definitely I'll try to get this posted in time for you to take advantage of that sale on his new website. Uh, it looks beautiful. So definitely go check it out. And, uh, until next time, guys, always follow your raw intuition. Love it, brother. Love it. Thank you so much. Of course. Oh, Hey, can I add one thing actually? Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's all right. I just want to mention too, because I mean, you know, I mentioned the site and the sale, but if you just want freebies, which freebies are good. I mean, I have I have a huge, you know, raw some recipes playlist with like 60 recipes, but I also have uh, two free eBooks if you sign up to my mailing list at the site and a free app. So if you have an iPhone, you can just write the raw advantage. The app will pop up. It's got a lot of free recipes and within the next few weeks, it'll be available on Android as well. So cool. that's one of the best ways to get all my recipes. Awesome. Yeah, I'm going to have to get that once it comes out for Android. So Perfect, yeah. It's it been a long time coming, man. Long time coming. So I'm stoked to bring it out and hook up all the Android peeps. Sweet. Sweet. All right, guys. Well, you heard it. Go get that app and you'll, you know, you'll have much better success you know, finding some great recipes because Chris makes, oh my, he's well known for having just amazing recipes. Thanks, brother. So, yeah, man. All right. Thanks again, guys. Always follow your raw intuition. Love. Detoxify your mind and body. Be the change you want to see. Small steps towards living better. Small steps to where I want to be.